Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And by popular demand, the hard candy Christmas card today. About a month and a half-ish ago, I created this card and showed it to you guys. But I was surprised at how much feedback I got that people wanted to know how I made this. And since I had some space here on my YouTube channel and Christmas is coming, I thought it'd be fun to show you how I did that and remake this card. So I've got VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, which is waterproof, and my Arches Cold Press Paper, and all of my little stamps for my candies are on blocks. And I started with the biggest one. When you're going to do something like this, get the biggest one out of the way, because otherwise you're going to not have anywhere to put it. And then each one of the littler images start to work in around it. And I used a plain basic sticky note for masking. I didn't bother like doing any fancy trimming around anything. I just kind of covered up portions of it. Because with a candy jar like this, it doesn't even matter if the candy is completed. If you just kind of stick the thing over the corner of a candy and block off most of it, even if you stamp over top of one of the images, no one's going to see that because they're just going to see the mass of candies in the jar and be just fine with it. You're also going to be able to take a pen later and fill in any empty spots. So you don't even have to stamp into every single one of them, but I just wanted to stamp as much as I could so that by the time it came to doing all that pen work, I had very little left to add in there. But you could do, you could stop a lot sooner than this and then just start drawing in circles, which will just be some kind of random candies. Nobody needs to really see them superbly defined, but then any of the areas where you're masking covered something up, you can just finish off the line. And I'm going to use just neutral tint, one color for this whole thing. And I decided to start with the, uh, the little part right here underneath of this fancy scallop. And I watered my paint down because I had too much color at first. I was concerned that it was going to get too dark too quickly. And then I'm just going to fill that area in by filling it in with my brush. Like there's not a lot of rocket science here, but uh, in order to keep the color from getting too dark, I use just water here in this last part with all of the color that's into the scallops there and just join them basically with water so the color automatically do goes out and blends. Using a really light color on the glass itself, and I'm going to leave a little white line around the outside edge or the the interior of the glass because that's going to make it feel a little bit more glass like glass has dimension to it has thickness and even though you can see through it you you can kind of see a little either dark or light around the outside edges and it's easier to paint, to paint it light and then i just dropped color into a variety of the candies now you can go in and very carefully paint each candy of course but it seemed easier to just do some, some blobs in there and allow some of the areas to get really dark and some of the areas to stay lighter and leaving some white highlights as well. And I'm just working with one color, partially for the reason that I couldn't figure out since the stamps themselves had black in them. So the, the, candy, the candy cane itself and those little peppermints, the black part would really be red. And I didn't stamp them in red because I don't have a red waterproof ink. So I had to stamp them in black. And why not go for a, a black and white picture? I mean, it's, it's unique. It's different. It has a vintage feel. So that seemed to work for me. And then I had dropped in a bunch of other, just into the wet areas, dropped in thicker black paint to just allow more of that neutral tint to blend out into the other colors. And for the top section... In order to leave a little bit of white highlights in there and not have too much color, I just put a little circle above each one of the scallops and then joined them and let all the paint mixing do itself naturally instead of trying to worry about that. Adding in just some random brush strokes to make, make it more pleasing to myself. Next up is adding the shadow. And my students from Clearly Copic will know that glass does indeed cast shadows. So I've got a, a stem shadow and then 
just letting the shape get kind of broader so that it looks like it's the shadow of the entire jar. And next up was going to be figuring out how to create a horizon and get that blended out really softly. And this is a lesson hopefully that you can use in lots of things, even if you don't get this stamp and make this card, you can make a really simple graduated background this way. So I've put a very thin, very light pale line of color. If you're going to use a darker color, then obviously you'll need to kind of darken the amount of pigment that you put down. But I wanted it to be just barely there, just a very, very light color. So while everything is still wet, that's going to be the secret, is making sure everything is still wet, don't let it dry. Then I tipped my board, and I'm holding it away from me at an angle, so it's kind of all that paint is going to drain downward, which is actually upward. And I've, I'm adding more paint and water and just going over it and tending it along the way so that it continues to move. And I'm not going to let it let the paper down again until I'm pretty satisfied that it's that it's blended well and it's not going to actually settle back in. Because a lot of times you'll get backwash of some puddles. So if you have any puddles of water, they're going to collect and they're going to create blooms. But the gravity of tipping your board is going to allow that, that water to just keep moving. So I'm going to tend the very, very edges with a baby wipe. Soften that up to make sure I don't get, have any puddled water collected. And then I stamped my sentiment and added the Christmas on another piece of watercolor paper and put it on some dimensional adhesive. Over on IGTV, I'm going to have a Copic version of this card and no line coloring. And after that video goes live, I will add a link to the description down below so that you can find that easily if you would like. That's about it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that like button and share it with your friends and go make something beautiful. I will see you again very, very soon.